All right, everybody. Today I'm doing some basic maintenance on the Garami tank. It really needs a water change, uh, not because the water is dirty, but because the water is tannin stained. It's really dark. Um, I've just changed the lighting recently. Again, I did really brighten it up. Uh, I found that was a little too much for the algae. I got a really big explosion of algae, so now I'm dimming it back down. Uh, unfortunately, I've had to juggle some lights around, etc., etc. So I really cut back on the lighting, and I was, you know, as a result, I really want to get rid of a lot of those tannins because they really do uh, soak up what little light I'm putting in there now. So hopefully, at the end of this video, we're going to have a nice brightly lit tank again, or as brightly lit as it can be under the circumstances. Because again, I did reduce the lighting here recently. Um, this is not going to be your proper before because I've already got one of the fixtures turned off. I've got the hood open. I've already sort of begun this process. Um, but I will do a proper before and after at the end of the video. Uh, the main thing I want to talk about in this video is I want to talk about filter maintenance. Um, I hear a lot of different people say a lot of different things about when and how often and that sort of thing uh, you should do these uh, filter maintenance on these. Now they're a fairly common filter. This is the 304B. Um, I think everybody has some variant on this or something similar whether you've got one of the expensive name brands. Uh, or not, they all work on the same basic principles. So today I want to talk a little bit about how I do my filter maintenance and then of course you're certainly welcome to leave your comments below uh, as to how you feel about that and how you do yours, etc. So I do mine about once a month. Um, I can let it slide a little longer than that, it doesn't really make me sweat. Um, if I'm in a really active mood and it hasn't been quite a month, I don't mind changing it more frequently than once a month either. Um, it's no exact science. I don't have any fish that are hypersensitive to uh, nitrates or anything like that. And that is the key to doing the changes on these types of filters. All of the detritus, all of the filth, all of the fish poop, everything that you don't see in your tank isn't being just taken out of the world. It's just being taken out of your line of sight. It is still right here in your filter floss and trapped in your filter. So it's the same as being in your tank. You just can't see it. So if you don't change your filter for two months or three months or five months, that's five months worth of waste just breaking down into your tank. Um, I've heard canister filters referred to in the past as nitrate factories, and that is a very good description. Uh, if you leave them to just build up the dirt, it just continually breaks down and just pumps the nitrates into your tank and pumps the organics into your system because the water is still running through all of that filth it's just not in your line of sight anymore um, so that's an important thing to remember they don't necessarily have to be taken um, or, or uh, cleaned out as frequently as the hang on the back filters uh, the main reason for that is because of the much larger area of filtration. You've got a, just more surface area, more filter uh, to collect the stuff. Now that doesn't mean that it's not still breaking down once it's in there. Um, I've done some experiments and I've sort of waited and watched and it usually took a few weeks before I really started noticing a climb in the nitrates dramatically. And I think that was because it took that long for the waste to really start breaking down uh, and get into really sort of a high production of the nitrates. Now, the, the, the nitrogen cycle was able to handle the amount of waste that was being produced, but the end result is that it's just dumping all of these organics and all these nitrates into your tank. Um, so I try to do my filter maintenance once a month or so. So how I do it is pretty simple. I separate it. I've got two buckets there. The bucket on the left is a square bucket. If you will notice the canister filter itself is square-ish. This allows me to put it in here and it holds it. Uh, it does have a light. I'm having a little trouble doing this one-handed. Uh, but it does have a uh, light that sticks down and by sitting it on top of this square bucket like that it allows me to leave the light in there and protect it from getting banged into anything. You don't want to sit it on the floor and lean it against that. Uh, so I just set it in that bucket that's safely out of the way and then I will begin by pulling these out one at a time. I let them drain a little bit and then I just move them over here into this bucket so I'll do them out in reverse order in the other room. Um, it's very important when you are cleaning these out to keep your biomedia in mind and we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But 
not just yet we're gonna see how dirty this is as we get all the way to the bottom and then we will go in and we will do some uh, nitrate tests and we will look at what's going on with the water and we will talk a little bit about uh, why to clean this as frequently as you do and how to properly clean it when you do there are ways you can do this that will actually do more harm than good so this is where the real filtration happens. Most of my filtration is for biofiltration, and since I do it on a monthly basis, I only really need one solid filter area in the bottom, and so that's my filter tray. The rest is basically biofiltration. So that's not too bad. Uh, the water itself is pretty manky, it usually is. Uh, that's all the filth that sort of come out of everything. So let's take some water samples, go in the other room, and we will have a look at what's actually going on with my organics after a month of uh, not doing a filter change, although it's only been about 10 days since I've done a water change. So let's go see what's looking like on the uh, nitrates. All right, everybody, while the tank is draining, let's look at what I'm doing over here at my mad scientist workstation. This is the filter material now that you can see it a little more clearly. Um, you know, it's pretty gross. It traps a lot of nasty gunk in there, and it builds up. If you'll notice how I have these sheets, I use the batting, which actually comes in a big roll, and then I cut it into strips, and then you can cut those strips into whatever size you want with a regular old pair of utility scissors. Uh, that's what I do. I also have this stuff which is just fluff a lot of you might be familiar with uh, i don't like this just because it doesn't pack in properly it's much easier to use these sheets cut them to shape cut them to size you can use them for almost any kind of filter you want um, so that's that so let's just get this out of the way because that only needs to be swapped out and cleaned so the biofiltration and i'm just using these little scrubbies but if you look under them i have another sheet of that stuff and that is pretty funky and nasty so this is only about a month um, I do feed heavily I do have a fairly heavily stocked tank and that's all part of my high maintenance schedule and we'll get into a little bit of that uh, later on so that is pretty gonky looking but water still flows freely through it and that's what you need to worry about when you get into cleaning your biomaterial as long as water still moves through it it doesn't matter how ugly it looks um, the the bio um, the bacteria that lives on there that your your um, nitrifying bacteria is what is causing that to be so gunky. Your bio balls are the same way. Your bio rings, etc. Now you can see the rings themselves are not clogged up. They're not dirty. It's just a little gross looking. Of course, the filter underneath is disgusting. That'll come out, and I'll put a new pad in. Um, but these are where all of the bacteria live. This is the surface area. So as long as water is flowing freely through that, just leave it alone. Just put it right back in and don't bother it. Um, I can do a little brief rinse if I need to, and I can use my tap water. That is only because I have well water and I know exactly what is in my water. If you have municipal water, chances are you have chlorine or worse, chloramines in it. And if you use that to rinse your biomaterial, it will actually kill the bacteria that's living on it. Um, so don't do that. And the only time you really even want to mess with that is if it's getting so gunked up that the water is having trouble flowing through it. And when you do, all you want to do is gently rinse it and swish it around either in some tank water or some RO water or something like that that does not have any chlorine or any other antiseptic uh, properties to it and just get it clean enough that water will flow through it again that's all you want you really do not want to clean this stuff thoroughly because you're wiping out your bacterial colonies um, i say over and over again that you have to treat them as though they are inhabitants of your tank you have to keep them alive and healthy for the rest of your tank to stay alive and healthy so enough about that what else are we looking at we are looking at some tank water and some tap water can you tell which is which uh, that's a lot of tannins in there so I want to show you what these two bluish green tests are. Those are the pH. The pH to the left is my tap water, about 7.3, and the one on the right is from the tank, and it's about 7, maybe a little more than 7. So we lost 0.3, I'll say, uh, on the pH scale uh, over a, maybe a two-week period since I've done a big water change on this tank, and you can see the level of tannins that have built up. So I've said before that tannins are not some magic 
um, pH reducer if you've got fairly hard water. Now my water does not have a huge buffering capacity and the more buffering capacity you have, the less effect those tannins are going to have. So at my 7.3 pH, the tannins can actually have a fairly significant impact if I let them build up to this level. If you've got a pH of like 7.6 or even worse if you get up into 8 or 8.2 and you want to reduce your pH, putting some wood in your tank or a little bit of peat in your filter uh, to add some tannins to your tank is really not going to cut it. It's really not going to reduce your uh, pH by very much at all. So keep that in mind if you are looking to use tannins as a magic pH reducer. Uh, the last test we've got back here is my nitrate test and despite as filthy and dirty as all of that stuff looks and as filthy and dirty as that water may appear, that's largely tannins. Um, my uh, nitrates are right around 30 parts per million, which isn't bad. I'm not too worried about that at all. In fact, I'm not concerned about that in the least. As I said, the only reason I really wanted to do this change uh, was to clear the water up a little bit. It's just getting a little too tea stained for me. One final point I will make before we go back and look at the tank again is I used my total dissolved solids meter. I tested my tap water. I tested my tank water. Surprisingly, my tap water this time around has slightly more dissolve solids in it than my tank water does and the only way I can account for that is my water system is actually reacting to changes in the groundwater um, it's springtime the farms have been out I live in farm country so there might be a lot more nitrates getting into the groundwater um, I have ion exchange medium in there so the more stuff that has to take out the more sodium ions it's putting in so any kind of fluctuations in my groundwater will still bring my water out of the tap at the same pH and fairly stable but my dissolved solid count will change a little bit so I do kind of keep an eye on that if you've got city water or municipal water you should really be checking your water every time you do a water change because you have no idea what they're really doing to your water it probably won't fluctuate much but you could have a fairly significant shift in pH and not even know it um, that's just something to keep your eye on just always test your water I guess I can't say that enough just always test your water these test kits are not expensive you got time to kill while you're waiting for the water change to happen anyway just test your water so let's get back over to the tank and see what it looks like once we've got it filled back up yeah we're all done uh, all I really did was wipe the glass down. I didn't do anything else in there other than the water change. I did do a pretty big water change though, probably about 60%, maybe 70%. And then of course I did all the work to the filter. So on a few final thoughts I wanted to add um, about my total dissolved solids and that number fluctuating. If you're not familiar with my water and, and the system it goes through, that is a water softening system. And I do not recommend you use softening or softened water in your tank if you don't know exactly what's going on with your softener. That is sodium ions that are being added into my water, but I know how many it is and I know I'm well within safe limits. That's not uh, an issue for me at all. But I do keep an eye on that. I do check my water regularly because you never know what kind of changes may happen in your water. Um, so check your water to whatever capacity you can as frequently as you can uh, whenever you're doing these water changes or anything especially when you're doing massive water changes like that if you're doing a small 10% and the pH is a little a little off or something it's not really gonna make that big of a difference that's why these more frequent smaller water changes are recommended uh, I don't recommend doing these massive water changes that I do either um, if again if you don't really know what you're doing with your water and you don't really know how stable your water is etc uh, you you could do a big you know 50 60 percent water change and you could really cause a big shift in your pH. Uh, you could cause a dramatic shift in um, you know your, your your carbonate hardness, your total dissolved solids, your general hardness. There's a lot of things that you can shift radically when you do a big uh, water change like that. So you really want to be careful and really make sure you understand what you're doing before you go ahead and do these huge water changes. So that's more or less a look at my filter and the tank before and after. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you're not subscribed already, please go ahead and do so. Uh, we'll see you real soon on the next one.